Well, uh, good day, everyone, and it's a real pleasure to be here at the State Veterans Home. We're here to salute our veterans. Uh, they have served and protected us, and we have a duty to care for them uh, because in very difficult circumstances, they all protected us. And we also obviously want to recognize the staff here at the Veterans Home. They've done an extraordinary job when it comes to the COVID pandemic uh, to make this place not only safe, but also a, a real, real home and source of comfort for veterans and their families. Um, and we appreciate what you do very much. Uh, obviously, I'm delighted to be here with my colleagues in the White House who play a critical role in efforts to support this home uh, and many other efforts over the last several months with respect to the pandemic. Uh, Governor McKee, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Director Yon, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, an old friend, Sam Anzanaro, my uh, buddy from Wesley, and uh, Senator Murray. Thank you, Senator, who are here. Uh, and I want to be able to announce, along with Senator Whitehouse, that uh, the Rhode Island State Veterans Home is getting a down payment of $840,000 to help <laughs> and, uh, to help with their response to COVID-19. And I say down payment because more help is on the way because more help is needed. Now, we've got to ensure we're doing everything to protect our veterans, and not just our veterans, but also others in nursing homes throughout the state. Uh, from becoming casualties of COVID-19. We know, and I used to refer to these people as older, but lately I've been saying more mature. Uh, <laughs> but more mature people with medical conditions are at increased risk. We know that. So this is a place where we have to spend attention and have enhanced measures for, for protection. And the money we announced today is a series of funding that we've been able to direct to veterans throughout the country. Last March, I was asked to be part of the uh, bipartisan working group to develop the CARES Act. And in that act, we included $19.5 billion for the Department of Veterans Affairs in that initial bill to deal with our veterans through the VA system. And these funds were geared to ensure that veterans would have the care they need. But as the pandemic continued, we know and we knew that we had to do much more. And we knew that the state veterans homes throughout this country were under particular pressure. And so Sheldon and I were working on efforts to direct money specifically to state veterans home. We were able to do some, do that in the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act. And we also included another $17 billion for veterans in the American Rescue uh, Act that just passed a few weeks ago. Those funds will continue to support veterans and veterans homes and VA operations throughout the country. We have to be prepared, we have to protect our residents, and we have to respond to all of their needs, particularly their health needs. And we also have to ensure that uh, everyone is vaccinated. And that's why the Veterans Administration has now opened vaccinations up to all veterans to their spouses and caregivers. And I was up at uh, Providence at Davis Park, looked at the vaccination site. They're doing a remarkably good work. So I urge all veterans, if you need a vaccination, just contact the Veterans Administration Hospital. And we have to renew our dedication to these veterans because as I said, and I can't say it enough, they were there in difficult moments to protect us. Now, Senator Whitehouse was also a key author of a vision to help protect our seniors overall, and he'll elaborate on that, I hope. We're grateful what our, for what our veterans have done, so let me once again emphasize today's down payment of $840,000 down payment will help and soon be followed by another $2 million boost for Rhode Island State's Veterans Home, which we anticipate coming from the American Rescue Plan. So with that, let me recognize my colleague, Senator Joe Reynolds.
Thank you, Jack. It is a pleasure, as always, to uh, be with you, my senior senator and the leader of our congressional delegation. I'm delighted to be joined at what is my first public event with our new governor, Dan McKee, who I've known for many, many years and has always been a very strong supporter of veterans. And uh, Senator Murray, who is the vice chair of the Senate Veterans Committee, and Sam Azanaro, who is the relentless and uh, extraordinarily passionate um, chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, he turns up at literally every veterans event that there is. And I know that uh, Senator Murray and uh, Representative Azanaro uh, are incredibly important voices for veterans in our State House and now with Governor McKee. I think there are a lot of good things to be done, including seeing excuse me, our director, Kasim Yarn, still in action, where he has been such a formidable uh, veterans director for our, our state and a great friend as well. So I will just briefly echo, oh, I should add, of course, that Jack is not only the leader of our delegation and my senior senator, he is also a passionate advocate for veterans and a veteran himself, the only one in the uh, delegation. Um, as Jack indicated, the down payment of 840000 to support this beautiful facility is uh, already dedicated and on its way. And behind it, through the American Rescue Program, will come additional funding as the allocations get worked out for us. Uh, the total is $750 million for construction grants and payments to state veterans' homes around the country and another $14.5 billion for the VA. Let me take a moment to echo Jack's point that vaccines work. They not only save the lives of people who get vaccinated, but they also control the spread of the disease and save the lives of other people as well. And no one understands better than an American veteran the uh, value of saving others' lives. One last piece that Jack mentioned is that uh, working with Senator Casey of Pennsylvania, I authored a provision to help deal with what we saw happening in nursing homes here in Rhode Island during the COVID epidemic. Some people had pretty good COVID experiences. Some people had horrendous COVID experiences. People who worked in nursing homes had extraordinarily difficult experiences. We had a witness in the Finance Committee in the Senate from a nursing home in Rhode Island, Greenville Nursing Home. She was a member of the Service Employees International Union, and she took us through what that experience had been like as 14 of her patients, who she knew from day-to-day -day care with them, died in that period. And she saw her own <coughs> colleagues also get sick, and they weren't aware of where relief would come from if they were too sick to work. So what we have done is to provide a program with $250 million in funding to states so that should this happen again, there are surge teams ready to come in and pick up the slack when an illness goes through the staffing of a nursing home and they're simply not able to provide the services any longer. Uh, $200 million for Health and Human Services to contract with quality improvement organizations like our own Rhode Island Quality Institute to provide infection control assistance to these nursing homes so that from the very get-go, infections can be contained as much as possible. So it's been a real pleasure to work with Senator Reid on all of this, his leadership through this whole process of very, very significant appropriations has been very meaningful. He is on the Senate Appropriations Committee. And I also will close um, by being sure to mention that a lot of this was led by the House of Representatives. Um, Jim Langevin and David Cicilline could not be here today, uh, but Jack and I both commend their role in getting so much of this done on the House side for us to confirm in the Senate. 